Hello there, and welcome back to another C Sharp Intermediate tutorial with the Stride Game Engine. In this tutorial, we'll cover projecting and unprojecting. By the end of this tutorial, you'll see a scene similar like this. The first part of this tutorial will cover this blue and this red ball. At first, we're going to project a 3D coordinate to a 2D coordinate. And that means that if we start moving these objects to our scene, notice how the text, which is a 2D effect, will be representing the 3D position of these objects. Then, our second part of this tutorial is the unprojecting method. For this, we're going to use this base golden sphere here, and then we're going to convert our mouse position, a 2D position, into a 3D position by sending out a raycast. And as soon as we hit something in our scene and we click with our mouse, we're going to make a clone of this sphere and position it at that hit point of our raycast. If you're tagging along with this tutorial, open up the fourth tutorial scene from the Scenes Solution Explorer project and unproject. Open up start, and then you'll see a scene similar like this. Our first script will be the projecting script. We're going to be using this global sphere, which is the red one, and it has a child sphere, which is the blue one. In our solution explorer, open up code, project, unproject, and let's add a new script here. Let's call this projecting. Let's select our camera and add this script to our camera. Projecting. Now let's go to Visual Studio. Let's first reference in those two spheres. The public entity sphere parent followed by public entity sphere child. We also want to store a reference to the camera component. Which we can retrieve during the initialization or the startup of our scene. There are various ways to convert the 3D position to a 2D position. One way is by using the vector method. For this, however, we need to know the width and the height of our canvas, of our game screen. So we're going to make a variable called backbuffer, which is graphics device dot presenter dot backbuffer. Just in case you don't know what a backbuffer is, when we are rendering a scene and it's being completed with all kinds of effects, post effects, etc., then this is being rendered to the so-called back buffer. And when our game engine is done rendering everything, we're swapping this out to the front buffer, and that frame is actually visible to the user. And this happens, well, ideally, at least 60 times per second. Now let's store the global positions or world positions of both our parent and our child sphere. Let's do the same thing for our child. Now we can actually calculate the correct screen space value for our parent. Parent screen position. We're going to use the vector3 method or extension method project. And that takes a bunch of parameters. The first one is that parent sphere position, this global position. Then we have to fill in the X and Y position of our viewport, which in our case is zero. So when we started our game, then we get our window. Now in our case, it's a relatively small window. And relative to the position of this window, we can actually draw the actual screen in the application itself. However, in our case, this will always be 0.0. .0. So at the top left of our game application window, we then have to fill in the back buffer width and the back buffer height.
We don't have to worry about the depth for now, but we do have to fill in the world view projection, and this is a matrix. Luckily, we can find that inside the camera component, which is the view projection matrix. Don't worry if you do not fully understand projections and matrices at this point. All you need to know is that you can use it and that you can retrieve that from our camera component. Let's do the exact same thing for our child sphere position, but of course swapping out the correct variables here. All we need to do now is print out those positions to our screen. Since our screen position is a vector 3, we only need to use the x and the y coordinate of this vector 3. Luckily, there is a method for this available as well, so we can easily retrieve the 2D positions. Let's do the same thing for the child. And let's use child screen position. Now let's go back to the stride editor. And here we can see that on our camera entity, we have this projecting script and the properties for child and parent are now available. So let's add the global as the parent and the child of this global sphere, that's the local sphere. And now we're almost set. Let's also add a script to both those two spheres so that we can move them around in the scene. Luckily, we have a pre-made script for these tutorials, which is called Omnidirection Movement. And then we have the option to move them vertically, horizontally, or in a forward direction. Let's add that to the child as well. And let's say that we can only move in a certain direction for this child. Now let's give our project a test run. We click the project and unproject scene. And we can see that our child and parent are displaying their texts. And if we press Q and E, we are moving them up and down. And then only the child if we press W and S. And you can see that our texts are being aligned with the 3D positions of our objects. And that's great. So what are the use cases of projecting your 3D coordinate to a 2D coordinate? Well, try to imagine a game like an RPG, for instance, where you have a quest marker on your screen and you want to know in which direction you need to be going. And this is a perfect example of displaying those 3D coordinates into a 2D coordinate. Now for the second part of this tutorial, where we will be clicking in our scene with the mouse position as a starting point, and then we'll send out a raycast, and where we hit something, that's where we're going to clone this golden sphere here at the bottom. So let's do that next. Let's create a new script that we're going to call unproject. And let's attach that to the camera as well as a new component. And if we go to Visual Studio, we can do something similar as with the project script. We're going to reference in a sphere. In this case, it's going to be that golden sphere that we're going to clone. We're also going to reference our camera component again, which we have to retrieve in our start method. And in our update, what we're going to do is we're going to check for mouse input. So we're going to say if input is mouse pressed, let's choose mouse button right, if that's the case. Now we've seen that we can utilize the vector three class to help out with projecting as well as unprojecting. But now let's use a different class that also contains these kind of helper methods. For this to work, however, we still need to have that back buffer reference again. So we say graphics device dot presenter dot 
stack buffer. And now let's make a viewport. The viewport contains various helper methods as well for, for doing projection and unprojection. We have to include it using stride.graphics namespace. And then all we have to say between the parentheses, let's see what kind of options we have here. We can set the bounds. We can set an X and a Y, which in our case is going to be zero and zero because we just want it to be at the top left of our game window. And then we can say back buffer width and back buffer height again. Now, in order to do a raycast, we need to have a start position and an end position. And that start position, that's actually almost at the exact same spot as our camera but then where our mouse is. So let's call this the near position or the close or very close to the camera position. And here we can utilize this viewport and we can say unproject. And this unproject method has two options. And we're going to use the latter one. We're going to say new vector three because that's what's required. And then here we specify our mouse input because our mouse input needs to be converted from 2D to a 3D point. So we can say input dot absolute mouse position. That's an X and a Y value, but we also need to specify a Z value. So we can leave that to zero because we want this to be near our camera. Then we have to fill in the camera projection matrix, the camera view matrix. And lastly, we have to provide a matrix where we want to multiply with, and that is the, going to be the matrix identity. And just in case you don't know what that is, if you're multiplying with a matrix and you're using the matrix dot identity, then the other matrix you're multiplying with is going to come back as the result. Let's copy this line. And instead of the near position, we also have the, well, far away position or the far position. We can still do the unproject, but this time on the Z axis, we're going to say that it's going to be away from the camera. So it's going into the depth or the Z axis or the local Z axis, if you will. But everything else can stay the same. And we'll see in a second that this works perfectly for our raycast. And as we've seen in a previous tutorial, in order to do a raycast, we need to get the simulation and then we can do a raycast. And for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to do that right here on the spot. So we're going to say variable hit result is this dot get simulation, which we have to include capital G here using stride dot physics. And once we've retrieved this simulation, we can do a raycast. And now we can fill in that near position and far position. Visual Studio was kind enough to fill that in for us. And now we already have that hit result. And now if we say hit result dot succeeded, then we can do some fun stuff like cloning that sphere that we've made. So sphere to clone. Let's call the clone method, which gives us a new sphere instance, if you will. And that sphere clone, let's say it's transform dot position. Uh, this is actually it's a local position, but since it's going to be at the root of our scene, we can just give it the uh, global position of our hit result. So we can say hit result dot point. And all we have to do now is say entity dot scene entities and add our sphere clone to our scene. If we don't do that, we will not see our sphere clone. Now, obviously we're not cleaning up our sphere clone properly, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to leave it at this point. So now let's go back to the stride editor. We go back to our camera object and here we have the sphere to clone. That's all we need to reference in our property here. And let's run this. Let's start our scene. And if we right click, you can see that we're now performing a raycast from the 2D position, the absolute position of our mouse. And then it's raycasting that into the depth of the world. 
or into the local z-axis, if you will. And if we click that a lot, we can sort of draw on our scene like that. And as you can imagine, this is kind of useful if you, let's say you have a top-down RPG and you want to direct your character by clicking somewhere on the map, then the unprojecting methods are the way to go. That's it for this tutorial. Hope to see you around for the next one.